LFT. Can we make some noise in the building, please, and thank yes, you? Yes, let us know you're here. Amen. Yes, yes. Well, listen, this is Good Morning Living Faith, your yes. pre-show service extravaganza. Yes, it is. And as you see, I am, we, tomorrow's not here today, but I am so honored and privileged. I'm a little emotional, so you got to bear <laughs> with me. I got my big sister up here with me. I have, this is... Pastor Elise Long. Pastor Elise Long, and she's in. Y'all can clap it up for that. Yes, listen, I'm Pastor Mark, and we are here at 5880 Old Dixie Road in Forest Park, Georgia, 30297. And we are the church that does what? Makes, Makes you, you fall, fall in, in love, love with, with church. church. All. You got All it. All over got again. It. Yes, and listen, I am excited to be. How are you today? I am doing good. I just want to make sure everybody shares and like before we really get started. She's a natural. We want people to know that we are here and you are here. So please be sure to share this morning. Amen. Y'all saw she said that? She said that. Say it one more time. Tell, tell it like somebody, auntie. Say it again. I need y'all to share <laughs> and I need y'all to like. Amen. That thing if came I'm out. If I'm your auntie, I'm going to tell you like your auntie <laughs> will tell you. You better share this thing. And this is my first time, so you know you better share. I saw the finger. See, y'all didn't see the finger. Yes. I knew it was for real when the finger did this. I knew it was for real when the finger did this. Okay, so listen, I, that was good. I like that. <laughs> All right, so listen, guys, we're here. Um, we have a very special, special announcement, which is one of the reasons why my big sister is sharing the stage with us this morning. And so I want to turn it over to her so she can tell us what is our announcement today. Talk to us. We have a huge announcement that okay. I am personally excited about. Okay. So we have a new leader for the women's ministry and the Lord is taking us in a different direction. Come on, come on, y'all can clap, come on. And so we have, actually, we're going to do it a little bit differently this year. We have a leader and we have a co-leader. Okay. So I want to introduce our leader. Her name is Vanessa Bailey. And come in the building, come, come on. So you can see her. Come on. I tell you, when you have people that you're leading, you always kind of want to, um, you want to think that you're training them right. I asked her yesterday, and then I'm going to introduce our co-leader. I asked her a couple questions. I said, have you gotten this done? Have you gotten that done? And she had the nerve to say, it's done already. It's, it's done already. Done al Somebody say, it's done already. I said, she tell me that one more time. She's going to make me feel like she don't need me. Amen? <laughs> I so love that's it. what you need on your team. And so she has someone that's also standing with her really quickly. We're going to have Victoria Strickland come up. I want everybody to know. Come that on, in the building. Come on, in the building. Come on. This is Victoria. Both of these women have a heart for women. And so as we go into this new year of expectation and God is doing some new things. Yes, ma'am. These are the faces that you're going to see representing you as women. Yesterday they had an event. I heard it was amazing. Come so on they here. have already started. So I just wanted to take a minute to introduce you to them and let you know who they are. And so when you see them, love on them, tell them congratulations, and they're going to be reaching out to you. Amen? Ladies in the building, can y'all make Amen. some noise for the new? Thank you. Newly appointed. Also, come on here with this blue. I'm going to let you, get y'all down while y'all got this blue on, how y'all got this blue on. And also, let me tell you this, while they're going down, we have, uh, they have their first event. It's going to be a women's brunch on April 27th. Brunch? We are having a brunch. We want the women to get together. It's been a while since we've done something. And so as we say, this is a new year. We yeah. want to have a brunch. We want to get together. We want to laugh. I have a very special guest that's going to be speaking. Special guest. And I love classy women. I love women that are on the move and doing something. Uh -huh. And so on April 27th, we are going to have a speaker in her own right come. Next week, I'm going to introduce her. You about to make us wait? Yeah, I'm going to make y'all wait. You got the so anticipation. So I'm going to introduce right. her next week. She is the bomb.com. And anybody knows me, I don't say that to anybody, right, Pastor Mark? Bomb.com. She is the bomb.com. Right. She classy. She is all of that. And she is a bag of chips. A bag of lace? Yes, Listen, she is. I, let me so tell y'all something. April 27th, before April 27th. Mark says it, please, April 27th. What time? 10 o'clock. The tickets are only $15. It okay. is well worth it. Please don't wait till the last minute. I'm going to be your auntie again. Don't wait till the last minute. Y'all better is. get these tickets right now. Amen? Amen. So okay. if, if they want to be a part of that event, they need to register by texting the word brunch. That's right. Brunch. So yeah, I was going to tell y'all how to spell it, but y'all know how to spell brunch because y'all go all the time. Brunch. <laughs> all right? Text the, 
text the word brunch to 404-361-0812. I'm not going to be there, but I'm excited about you announcing this speaker. I've never been so excited about an announcement before. Like, that don't even make sense. All these women who want to know how to get to the next level, and I'm, just, I'm not just talking about spiritually, I'm talking about business, because I'm a business person. Come on. I want to make sure that you women know what it is to get to the next level in your career. Come on. That's why she's going to be here. So April the 27th at 10 a.m. 10 a.m. Right here at Living Faith Tabernacle. Right here at LFT. And if you want to RSVP, you need to text the word brunch to 404-361-0812. So listen, that was a great announcement. We're going, we got a couple more minutes. We want to make sure that you know everything that's going on at Living Faith. Yes. We, are, we have started a brand new sermon series at LFT. Can we clap Woo! it up for the new? Come on, y'all. Clap it up for the new series. It is called Quantum Shift. Quantum shift. Qu quantum shift. That's, that should be really, really interesting. And we have it, obviously, every Sunday, but then every Wednesday we have... Bible study. Bible study. What time is Bible study? Bible study is at 7, 7 o'clock. 7 p.m. sharp. Right here at the Tabernacle. Right here. We're going to be here every single Sunday at 10, every Wednesday at 7. Make sure you are here. I'm excited because I'm looking, I'm looking forward to some things shifting. Yes. Yeah. I, I believe it's like you said. We're, we're because experiencing God a lot is in the shifting business. He's in the... God is in the shifting that? business. God is in the so shifting business. So we got a whole month talking about that. And listen, one of our pillars here at Living Faith Tabernacle is prayer. That's Can we clap it up for prayer? Amen. Amen. Come on, y'all. It's, it's, it's people at prayer. home watching online. Can we clap it up for prayer? Okay, so I'm excited because we have our... Inter they, thank y'all for that. Thank you. That was good. Okay. So we have our intercessors ministry. And listen, not only are they praying here every Tuesday, but they're taking it up a notch. They're clicking it up a notch. Yes. And every single Thursday morning, starting this Thursday at 8 a.m., they are having a new weekly prayer line that you can get on and be a part of. Much comes through prayer and fasting. Much comes through prayer and fasting. I can't do a whole lot, but I'm going to pray. We're going to pray. That's Amen. it. So listen, if you want to do that, we want to make sure that you see our leaders, Tasha King and uh, Christine Fitzhugh, and make sure that you have, get that yes. dial-in information every single Thursday, 8 a.m., okay? And then next Sunday, next it is going Sunday. down here at LFT. Next Sunday after service, we are having our ordination for the new leadership of this church. Come Amen. on, y'all. Can we clap for ordination service next week? Listen, we are ordaining new elders, new ministers, and some new executive pastors. And, and I'm God is I'm doing a new thing. He's doing a new God is doing a new it's thing. It's a quantum shift. We have a and we have a large class. So I'm excited about everybody yeah, really. that's going to be ordained, not just for myself. We have four executive pastors, as Mark says, and then I think we have at least over 29 people, over 25 people Crazy. that will be ordained either as elders or ministers. So that says a lot. So not only is God doing a lot for me, I see that he's doing a lot for everybody else as well. Absolutely. And that's what the man of God wants. That's what he wants, God. Amen. So listen, we only have one minute left, but let me make sure I say this really, really quick before we go. We are being serious now about our e-campus, our at-home community. So they are officially, y'all clap it up for this, okay? Okay. We are officially calling them the LFT home team. Can we Amen. clap it up for the home, home team, team that are watching here online? So listen, Amen. if you are an online member, we want you to text home team to 404-361-0812, and you will hear from somebody, even if you are not in Georgia, okay? Well, listen, you did an amazing job. Thank you. Thank you for coming. We're about to get Thank ready you. for church. This is Pastor Mark, and this is? Pastor Elise Long. And we want to say good morning, live in faith. Amen. We'll see you in church. Amen. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. I don't know what you come to do this morning, but I come to give God some praise. Because when I look back over my life, and I see who has brought me, I have no other choice but say, thank you. And I get a witness here. This morning, we come to give God his due. I don't want you come to do what I say. Thank you for keeping me. Thank you for waking me up this morning. Thank you for starting me on my way. Thank you for being a bridge of a troubled water. 
Thank you for being a shelter in the time of a storm. Thank you for being God above us. Thank you for you keeping us, Father. Father, I say thank you this morning because if it had not been for you, where would we be? Lord, I say thank you because when I laid down last night, I realized it was your love that woke me up this morning. For this, I say thank you. Lord, I need your glory. 
Lord, I need your glory. We can't go forth without his glory. Hallelujah. We can't have church without his glory. Hallelujah. We can't be healed without his glory. Amen. But since we are in the presence of the Most High King, we may as well bask in his presence and bask in his glory. Hallelujah. We worship your name, Jesus. We magnify your holy name. Lord, if I find favor in your sight, then Lord, please hear my heart's cry. I'm desperately waiting to be.
God, we lift your name, God. with a desperate heart saying for your glory say for your glory said I will do anything I will do anything just to see you just to see you to behold you as to behold you as my King for your glory for your glory Lord I'm so desperate for your presence God I will do I'm so desperate for your power, Jesus. Just to see to you. To hold you as. To be Come on, one more time. All over the room. Sing for you. Yeshua, his name is Yahweh, his name is awesome, his name is powerful, his name is healer, his name is savior, his name is Jesus. for somebody in the house this morning is breaking and I worship is shifting the atmosphere if you believe that give God a shout in this place if you believe that your worship if you believe that your praise has reached heaven Shifting. Somebody say it's shifting. Yeah, talk on that that the course. Somebody decree that it's shifting. Yeah, it's shifting the atmosphere. Your neighbor don't believe it. Look at him and tell him it's shifting the atmosphere. Come on, let's go higher in our worship. Hallelujah. We came to magnify our Father, and I'm excited about it this morning.
seated on high from there you spoke time and we were already on your mind can't explain your love without performance <laughs> you called us your own couldn't afford it so with your blood you bought our freedom can't explain
And if our God is with us, then what could stand against? And if our God is for us, then who could ever stop us? And if our God, come on, ask your neighbor, then let's do it, come on. Say, and if our serve a God that can do the impossible and for all of you in here that know that you serve a God that can do the impossible won't you give God praise and some of you may be asking why am I giving God praise I'm giving God praise because the impossible in my life is about to be possible with the praise that I put on my lips and so everything that wouldn't happen, couldn't happen, wouldn't take place is about to take place because I got a praise down on the inside. Now before we, before we grab this offering, I'm feeling real churchy today. Before we grab this offering, I need you to encourage your strong friends. Come on, look down your row and encourage your strong friends. Come on and tell them, come on, I need you to talk to them. Look at your strong friends. Look at him, look at him, look at him real good, look at him real good, look at him and say, because you've been strong, God is about to pay you. Come on, because you held out, because you held on, because you didn't give up, because you stayed consistent when everybody else fell apart, God is about to reward you. Come on, I'm only talking to the strong people. I ain't talking to the people that gave up. I'm talking to the people that pressed their way, that pushed their way, that struggled to get here. Come on, I'm only talking to you that God is about to pay you because you did not quit, because you did not give up. Come on, that's a reason to praise him. Woo! I don't have the testimony that I was giving up the testimony that I've been tried and true, that I pushed through just a little while. Come on. I got the testimony that I endure hardness as a good soldier. And because I endure, God had to make a way, had to make a way for me. All my strong people, you want to throw your hands up and say, I'm ready. Come on, don't play 
with me. I'm ready. Come on, I'm ready. I'm ready for my miracle. I'm ready for my breakthrough. I'm ready for my next. I'm ready for what you're about to take. Yes, yeah. Your neighbor quit, but you still here. Your cousin quit, but you still here. Your auntie stopped, but you still here. Daddy didn't make it, but you still. ready I can't speak for nobody else but I've been here come on here I keep showing up now this 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 ain't the season where the people that didn't show up gonna get blessed this is the season where the ones that have been showing up been doing it when you don't want to do it been been faithful when you didn't want to be faithful come on here those are the people that God is getting ready to bless for all my faithful, strong people, throw your hands up one more time and say, I'm ready. Come on, say it one more time in the Holy Ghost, I'm ready. I am ready, and I am grateful at what God has for me, and I'm looking forward to the miracle that he's going to place in my life. I am ready, and I am grateful. Uh, we are in our new series, The Quantum Shift. And I cannot wait to share the word uh, with you that God is shifting some things. And uh, here we are in the second quarter saying, God, what's next? And we're ready to go uh, to that next level. Some of y'all tired. Some of y'all woe out. Come on. Uh, but I need you to get your second wind and breathe and know that it ain't over yet. And God has us. Listen, it is offering time in the house. Thank you, Lord. We always use this moment uh, to celebrate God in our giving uh, and to worship him uh, because giving is also worship. I know we do a lot of talking about, uh, you know, you should give for this reason, you should give for that reason. Uh, but one reason why you really should give is because giving is a form of worship. I am a little bit grateful that we didn't really uh, come up during the biblical times because they gave a wave offering or this offering or that offering. Not quite sure if I would have had enough offerings to maintain uh, the stability of what they were asking for. Uh, but I'm grateful that you're in this room. Uh, if you're new to the Living Faith Church, there are several ways to give. If you're joining us for the first time online, uh, there are several ways to give. I need you to do me a favor. For all the people that come in late and they sit beside you, ask them if they gave, all right? Amen. Because you know how some people, they, 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 what I call the, 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 the they, they like to eat and ditch. They like to eat and then run out, all right? Uh, so we want to make sure that they pay for their food, all right? Amen. Some of y'all... <laughs> Some of y'all know y'all don't pay for nothing. Y'all just, oh, I left my card at home. Yeah, no. <laughs> so if you see them and they roll in here late, I be, I be picking at some people. So how you roll in late and roll out early? But God working on us. God working on us. If you're new to the Living Faith Church, we welcome you. Again, there are several ways to give, and that information is on the screen. And same to you online. Uh, if you're new uh, here, there are several ways to sow into this amazing church. I'm not going to go into all the stuff that we're doing in the community, but I am grateful that we are a church that is connected to our community. And as we always say, we are the church that makes you fall in love with church all over again. Now, do me a favor, if you'll lift that seed up in the air, uh, because I believe you should declare uh, over your seed that you are planting, uh, because this is worship, and we believe that God is going to do exactly what he says that he's going to do. Now, the decree is on the screen, and we want you to say that with us. I decree that as I give, the windows of heaven will be open, and God will rebuke the devour for my sake. This is my seed. God bless me with this seed. And today, 
I'm planting the seed. It will, it shall, it must reap a harvest in Jesus' name. Amen. If you're sowing monetarily, we'll ask that you bring your seed. Amen.
say? Come on, let's lift it together. Our God is worthy of all our praise. Searched all over, couldn't find nobody. I looked high and low, still couldn't find nobody. It's nobody greater. It's nobody greater. It's nobody greater. Nobody greater. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I searched all over, couldn't find nobody. Nobody sweeter. Nobody more consistent. Nobody more faithful. More importantly, God kept his word. And I am so grateful for that. Can we celebrate God one more time? As you know, there's always a million things that are going on here in our church. Uh, but we want to do something on this morning. I want you to take your phone out. Take your phone out. Some of y'all already got your phone already in your hand anyway. Y'all know we the generation. We live with our phone. I want you to take a selfie. Hopefully you put your eyelashes on straight. I want you to take a selfie of yourself. <laughs> take a selfie of yourself and tag the church. Come on. I want you to tag the church. Come on, tag the church. And I want you to hashtag it shift. Um, because today is your shift day. Today is your shift day. Today is a new day. That's right. Take a photo of yourself. Come on and, and tag the church, Instagram, Twitter, come on, Facebook. Come on, take a picture. I want you to mark this day uh, because this is the last day that you about to stop dealing with some stuff. Come on, this is this is this is this is a visual marker that there are some seasons that are concluding today. This is your shift day. This is your graduation day. Uh, this is your transition day. Uh, so I want you to just make sure that you uh, not only shift, shift, but I want you to make sure that you tag the church in that uh, because truly, I want to document your next and document where you are and document what you're going to do. Uh, and sometimes you got to put it in the atmosphere and you got to say, this is the last day for all of the stuff that I've been dealing with and all of the things that have been going on in my life. And today, this photo is a declaration that this was the last day that I had dealt with depression, that I dealt with alcoholism, that I dealt with poverty, that I dealt with situations in my marriage or my relationships. Today is today where we mark that this is the shift and that this is the end. I'm trying to get some of y'all to be prophetic because that's a prophetic declaration. Sometimes the word, the word says that, that, that faith without works is dead so we're trying to put uh your faith to work and as you're doing that 
there are so many things that are going on here in Living Faith, and you know, uh, we always run through the gamut of what's going on here in our church. Uh, but I want to say this, our e-campus is growing. We have a lot of e-campus members who are not in this building, but they're in Chicago, they're in Texas, they're in Canada, they're in California, they're all over the place. And can we just take a moment and celebrate our e-church? To all of our e-church, if you would, uh, get connected. There's some links there that we want to connect with you. Uh, they're going to be doing a e-church breakfast, which means you'll be eating breakfast in your collective homes, and we'll be having a e-church prayer breakfast. Amen? Uh, and so we'll be doing that, and we're excited about that. Also coming this month, uh, we're going to be doing and uh, jumping into some financial literacy and we're going to be talking to some folks uh, about uh, getting their finances together and in addition to getting their finances together how to come out of debt and how to make money and how to do all of those things. We got uh, some amazing people that God has placed in this church. Uh, Susie Jackson, I don't know if she's here today, but if you are, wave your hand. Uh, she is the IRS guru, amen, and as much money as I owe the IRS, amen, Susie is the person to talk to. Uh, so Susie and all these other folks are going to be here to help us. Is Susie here? Amen. On this afternoon, I don't think she's here on this morning, but uh, if you haven't met Susie, find Susie. Amen. Because I had to find Susie because uh, I, I don't like these letters. Amen. But the more you make, the more they take. All right. <laughs> Amen. Um, please don't forget about Bible study. Is this Wednesday night at 7 p.m. We want you to be here. Our Living Faith uh, intercessors are starting a new weekly prayer line. Uh, it's going to be Thursday at 8 a.m. Prayer is a staple in this church, and we love prayer, and we are serious about prayer. Uh, somebody prayed real hard, got me in this three-piece suit, and I can't breathe. All right? All right. So I'm going to preach real fast today. Real fast, real fast, real fast. I'm excited because I've been listening, y'all, and I got to dress up next week. Y'all done got me three Sundays in a row. But I bet I come in here on third, whatever Sunday with some jeans with holes everywhere, tattoos out. I might even get my ears pierced. All right? Listen. Amen. <laughs> Ordination service is next Sunday. I am so excited to be uh, to be affirming these executive pastors, these elders, these ministers, all of these folks who have went through our MIT training. And we bless God for Dr. Varian Harris for being a great teacher and helping everybody uh, matriculate through that class. Our women's ministry um, are having a spring brunch on April the 27th. Amen. You can text brunch to 404-361-0812. And listen, we have a spring cleanup day. We want to clean the church and want to make sure that our uh, church looks aesthetically well on the outside. Uh, thank you so much uh, to all of you that pick up trash everywhere you when you see it and you just put it in the trash can. Uh, we appreciate you. Uh, that's going to be on April the 20th. Uh, our 62 and older community are having, our ministry uh, are having a give me my flowers while we still can smell them affair and that's going to be on May 11th at 12 p.m. <laughs> Amen. Uh, we got midweek prayer uh, every Tuesday every Tuesday at 11 a.m. we're praying. We got our men's round table which happened today uh, which is led by Executive Pastor Furlow. Uh, if we're looking for people to join the Pastor's Aid Committee, uh, I think Erica is here if you'll raise your hand. Uh, listen, our community is a community where we want to make sure that we have a pulse on our community and the food pantry has been a major staple here in the Living Faith Church. And so we want you to, if you want to be a part of that, uh, text PANTRY uh, to 404 If you want to be a part of our crazy, amazing, best-in-the-world dance ministry, text DANCE to 404 If you are a greeter and you got all of your teeth, or, or... We're in a new season. Or if you got toilet chips in your mouth and you like smiling, 
and you got these veneers. Come on here, smile real good. We want you to be on the greeters ministry. Amen? So text GREET to 404-361-0812. If you uh, want to be a part of our Nurses Guild, yes, we have nurses in this building. Amen? We have nurses in this building, so if we can't pray you back, we can put you up to the AED machine and knock you back. All right? All right, so we ain't got no power to get you back. Uh, we got an AED machine. We'll lock you up to that, and hopefully it'll bring you back uh, so you don't have to go to hell. Amen. If you want to be an usher, text 404-361-0812. <laughs> I didn't say nobody was going. Well, technically, I did. So if you want to be an usher, text 404-361-0812. If you want to be a teacher in the youth department, same thing. Uh, text youth to 404-361-0812. If you want to be a part of the choir, text choir to 404-361-0812. Our media ministry, text media to 404-361-0812. And so if you're not a part of a ministry here in the Living Faith Church, we want you to be a part and we want you to connect. Uh, as I said, we're in our new series, Quantum Shift. Uh, you should have already received the notes in your email. Uh, and if you are new here, uh, if you get on the email list, you'll get my notes to this sermon that we're about to preach in this moment. Uh, so for those of you that already have the notes, you should have gotten those notes about 950 this morning uh, And you should be looking right at those and if you would do me a favor. Can we stand in reverence of the Lord? Uh, we stand in reverence uh, of the Lord um, Just of the reading of his word I'm Gonna read a couple of verses in Genesis and we've talked about Joseph a lot um, Throughout the church and we're gonna talk about him again on this morning uh, we're going to talk about the quantum leap our series is the quantum shift uh, but today I want to talk about leaping and talk about the design and the structure of God and how sometimes uh, what looks like a disaster uh, really is deliverance and what looks like it is the end and it's not going to work really is God working some stuff out in your favor and so I'm learning to be appreciative of those disastrous moments in my life uh, because I know that God is doing something uh, that I can't even imagine or fathom. So Genesis 37 declares, when Joseph's brothers saw him coming, they recognized him in the distance. As he approached, they made plans to kill him. Here comes the dreamer. They said, come on, let us kill him and throw him into one of these cisterns. We can tell our father a wild animal had eaten him. Then we'll see what becomes of his dream. Heavenly Father, I thank you for your goodness and your mercy. Thank you, Lord, that you've brought us in this collective space to share in your word. I pray, God, that every ear will be open, that every heart will be receptive to what you have to say to them. And God, even if they're not in this building, if they're at home, I ask God that you allow your presence, your anointing, and your grace to go and arrest them. And I pray, God, that you will cover them and keep them. And I thank you, God, for all that you've done in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. When you look at the word a quantum leap, uh, the definition for quantum uh, means abrupt change, sudden increase, and dramatic advance. And I want to make sure that we say that together. Everybody say abrupt change, sudden increase, and dramatic advance. So I'll say that again just so we have it for clarity. When you think about quantum or when you think about leap, it is an abrupt change, which means you were not expecting it. It's something that's kind of happened, and it happened extremely quick. It is a sudden increase, which means I got a sudden increase out of nowhere and didn't quite know how I got it. And it is a dramatic advance. I've been already promoted, and I don't even know that I'm promoted. 
And so when you think about quantum and you think about all of those things, you think about where God is taking us and where God is putting the church. Now, I want to talk uh, real briefly about uh, Joseph, but before I talk about Joseph, I want to talk about his father, Jacob. And Jacob had four baby mamas, and I want you to talk about these baby mamas. Jacob had four baby mamas, and he had 13 children. And so when we break down the baby mamas uh, diagram, he has two wives, basically, and two side cheeks, all right? Uh, Leah is one, and Rachel is one, and Belia and Zippa are the other two. And so when you break all of this down, Joseph is the 11th of the boys, but he's the 12th of the child, which means he's in all that 13 and 12 uh, has its significance as well. And so when we see where Joseph is, the Bible says uh, that Joseph is the 11th son out of all of his brothers, and he is the youngest son. But out of all of his brothers, he is the individual or the one that is a dreamer out of the whole family. Now, I want to say this to you. In every family, there is a dreamer, a fire starter, a person that sets the trend for where their family goes and for where their family has to be. Everybody kind of depends on them to kind of make everything happen. Some of you are in this room where your family looks to you to do every single thing. It's almost as if that they weren't the older sister or the older brother. You ended up being the one that kind of set the trend for everything. This is what Joseph was in his family. He was the trendsetter. Everybody say that with me. I'm a trendsetter. The word says that David or Joseph is the trendsetter in his family and he is a dreamer. And we've talked about this before that he shares his dream with his family because they are the closest to him and he has nobody else to share it with. And he's assuming that they are going to be excited for him because he shared this dream about promotion. He shared this dream about God taking him to another level. He shared this dream about things being amazing and great in his life. But what happens is that they do the absolute opposite. Instead of being excited for him, they are now jealous of him, which means they are now not only jealous of him, but they are now plotting against him because now all of a sudden you have a dream that you're going to be better than us, that you're going to be higher than us, and that you're going to do more than us. That's not the case. And I want you to write this down. So when he tells them about the dream, they are, they are mad about a dream. Ain't nothing happened. The man ain't moved nowhere. Ain't nothing, ain't nothing performed. Ain't nothing crazy went in the atmosphere. He just told them about a dream. So the reason why they were upset about a dream, and I want you to put this down, people are not mad that you dreamed a dream. They just don't like their place in your dream. Come on, we're gonna we going we going we going we going slow walk this. See, it's, it's 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 not that you are bothered that I had a dream. You just don't like the fact that you were below me in my dream, and my dream may have may or not include you. And since my dream does not include you, I don't like your dream. And the word says that they are now upset because he has a dream. And I want you to make sure you read it. People are not mad that you dreamed a dream. They just don't like that their, their place in your dream. See, this is the thing. People are not mad at your dreams. But when you have a dream that does not include them, that's when jealousy comes. When you have a dream or a plan that does not include them, that's when, that's when fear sets in. Because now you mean to tell me you're going to be younger than me and you're about to do better than me and we've been here the whole time? Just because we've been here together the whole time does not mean we carry the same grace. Some of y'all got a grace on your life that your neighbor does not carry. Talk back to me. That your sister does not carry. That your brother does not carry. And you're too busy trying to put your grace on them when the grace has been designed for you. Tap yourself and say, this is my grace. Uh-uh, say it like you mean it. This is my grace. The grace has been sufficient for me. Got to park right here for a minute because some of y'all don't understand the grace that's on your life. The grace that is on your life is that you cannot have no money and still keep all of your stuff while your neighbor is packing boxes. 
Talk to me in here. Come on here. The grace that is on your life, you can get cancer and live through it and the person got the same cancer that you got and died because there was a certain grace on your life. When you got grace on you, you live through, walk through, talk through some stuff that other folks have died from. I'm still parked on grace. I'm going to go to my next point. I just need somebody in here to understand that God has grace on your life. You ought to tap somebody and say, he graced me to do this. See, that's the reason why you can't copy what I'm doing and pretend and act like you're trying to be. I am grace for this moment. I ain't got no money, but I got grace. Come on here. I ain't got no friends, but I got grace. I ain't got no connections, but I got grace. I ain't got no next, but I got. Let me, let me, let me. He graced me for this. And so now, now, y'all in trouble. They ain't got the clock up, okay? So now, now, their dream, his dream, is not a part. They're not a part of his dream. And so now they're upset because they are not a part of his dream and they are below him in his dream. And the man has dreamed. He, it, it was just a dream. Nothing has happened. And the word says that they make plans to kill him. Now listen, we're talking about quantum leap. They make plans to kill him. And, and, and if you go back and if you study a, a quantum leap, it is an abrupt change. They make an abrupt change in his life by selling him off into slavery. So abruptly, he's now dead to Jacob because they go to Jacob and they say, this, your son is gone. And Jacob says, I don't believe it. And they say, well, here's the coat of many colors that you gave him. And they put blood on it to basically fake his death. And I want you to hear me. And the Bible says, man, Jacob is now sad. Jacob is now upset because, because Joseph is now has the appearance of being gone. So there's an abrupt change. There's an abrupt transformation that takes place in Joseph's life. This is the thing that you have to understand when abrupt moments happen. When abrupt moments happen in your life, your response is everything when stuff kind of slaps you in your face your response is everything which means how you respond determines what's about to happen next now let's go to the bible this abrupt change this quantum leap happens in his life and the word says that that, that you don't see him having any arguments you don't see anything crazy happening all you see is he's allowing his brothers to do whatever they want to to him sometimes you just gotta let people do what they're gonna do why because it's grace on you took my coat of many colors, and the coat of many colors was a representation of favor and grace. Which means, even though you thought you took my favor and took my grace, until you, if, if, if you didn't take the blood away from me, I still got favor and I still got grace. So my jacket is a representation of favor and grace, but I carry the favor and the grace. So basically, even if you take this away from me, I still got favor and I still have grace. And so people thought that if I take this away from you, that I'm going to take your favor and I'm going to take your grace. That is not the case. I'll have favor even in a hole. Because I carry the blood, come on here, of somebody that has grace. See, this is the thing. You think that you need an American Express to have grace, but some of y'all got your EBT cards and you still got grace on you. I need somebody in here that been at the bottom. See, when you at the bottom and you got grace on you, it don't matter where you at, don't matter where you are, you still coming out because you got grace on you. You're still coming up because you have grace on you. Come on, tap yourself on the chest and say, I got grace on me. 
Uh-uh, do it real good. Do it, do it, do it a little hard because some of y'all need to slap yourself in the chest and remind you that you got grace on you. They're not your friends. Come on here. You got grace on you. Come on. And where God is taking you, grace is about to catapult you even in your low place. I want to shout right there. I'm trying to stay where I'm at. I'm trying to be calm. But there's something about grace that makes me want to have a Holy Ghost fit that even with nothing, grace goes before me and grace makes a way for me even when I'm not in the room. Somebody shout grace. Come on, tap yourself on the chest and say grace is on me. Come on, tap your chip on the chest and say grace is on me. And so this is the thing. So our next point is dreams are revelations and not manifestations. When you have a dream, it is a revelation. It is not a manifestation, which means it has not come to pass yet. So when you dream a dream, in order for it to manifest, you got to go through the process. <sighs> let, me, let me stay here. Let me stay here. Because cause, cause the, the, the challenge in the current church, and I'm going to be real calm with this. The challenge in the current church is that we'll have a dream and we'll get a word from God. And then we'll go and we'll start running like the process ain't coming. Dream, process, deliverance, and then manifestation. Let's do it again. Let's do it again. Dreams process deliverance and then manifestation if you had a dream and then go through the process come on here then 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 what you had was just a thought and nothing was going to come if you're dreaming now about something and not going through the process then what you probably dreamed about ain't nothing it's not gonna happen the word says that his dream is just a revelation of where God is about to take him and what God is about to put him. They are mad at a revelation and not even the manifestation that took place yet. Manifestation ain't happened. They mad on the revelation. And this is the fun part. The fun part, they sell him off. We talk about abrupt change. His life abruptly changes. But let me tell you what happens. The word says that he starts to find favor because grace is on him. He starts to find favor in Potiphar's house because grace is on him. And listen what he's doing. He's not parading. He's not looking for attention. He's just serving, and they think that he's the best thing since sliced bread because he's been serving because grace is on him. There are some people that grace is just on their life. No matter what they do, no matter what they say, does not matter where they're going, Grace is just on them, and when people get around them, it is contagious. It is infectious. And you can tell people that got grace on them because grace start falling on you. You can tell people they got other stuff on them too because they start falling on you too. Hang around enough broke people. Hang around enough depressed people. Hang around enough people that are that, 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 that always talking down and then you'll find yourself doing the same thing because it will fall on you. <sighs> listen, listen, listen. I want you to write this down and I know some of y'all have it in your points. Their adverse response is you believing that my dream is going to come true. Their response to him is them knowing that the dream is about to come true. How is it that you are responding to the dream in a way that I ain't even responding to the dream? But you're responding to this dream in a way that I'm not responding to this dream because of the adverse moment and the adverse response of that you know that something is about to go down. And also, too, you saw me already carry the coat of many colors, which means you already knew that the grace of God was on my life. So if I'm telling you that I'm now having a dream, you are fearful and afraid of the adverse response that this thing might actually come true. What if I told you that what you've been dreaming and what you've been praying for, it might actually come true. And that thing might actually happen. 
And don't you know the enemy knows you are going to do more than you are going to do before you know that you're going to do more than you're going to do? I got to help y'all in here. That's why he attacks you. That's why he jumps on you. And that's why he gets in your anxiety and with depression and all of this. Because he knows what you are capable of. See, the enemy doesn't mess with anybody that ain't got damage on them. And ain't going to mess with nobody that ain't about to do something or make something happen. See, he don't mess with those people. But those people that says, look, I not only have a dream, but the dream going to take me through the process and deliverance. And then it's about to manifest. I know that the enemy jumps on you. You because he wants you to stop and he wants you to quit because you have something that you are going to do all my dreamers in here that you know that God is about to manifest what you've been dreaming raise your right hand to the Lord come on raise your right hand real good and tap yourself on the chest and say I'm ready Lord forgive you Lord I'm ready to move in the direction that you called me to move in we ain't gonna use our neighbor today because they don't want to talk to you no way so I'm just gonna let you talk to yourself and tap yourself on the chest and let yourself know that today is your shift day and this is the season that you're about to get your shift together and you're about to shift in a direction that you have never been shifted before I need five people in here that are getting ready to shift gears that says I was going in reverse but now I'm getting ready to go forward to where God has called me I'm trying to call let me, let me, let me I think it's a suit I think it's a suit this is so. Now, they, they are in a place where now, and we're almost done, they are in a place where now that every, they've attacked him, they've thrown in the word says that he's now in a place where he had a sudden change, and now all of a sudden he has a sudden increase, and so now he has this increase that happens in Potiphar's house where he starts getting elevated and promoted. Elevation and promotion does not come without temptation. I was trying to look him, y'all, but I can't move that fast today in this suit. Elevation, come on, and promotion, come on, comes with temptation. Which means if you ever plan to get elevated, then you better be looking for some temptation to come and tug on your back. See, see, I laugh because you can tell when you've been elevated because temptation comes from every side. You can tell that you ain't that, 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 that you ain't really that you ain't really got there yet. But now when you get there and now you become attractive to people that looked over you, you are now in a place of elevation. Word says, word says, almost there, word says that now he gets elevated in Potiphar's house and he is now over all of these things and now he becomes attractive because of his elevation. What if I told you that some of you are not that attractive without your elevation? That some of you are not attractive, come on, unless elevation is on you. It is the elevation that makes you attractive. And some people, they are not attracted to you. They are attracted to where you've been elevated to. And they have been assigned to take you down from your elevation. And some of y'all in here sleeping with your assignment. Hello, somebody. God didn't send them in your life for you to sleep with them. God sent them in your life for you to walk with them to the next level. Elevation comes, and now, all of a sudden, temptation shows up because I've now been elevated. And now God has placed me in another place, and now that he's elevated me, now all of a sudden, you think I'm attractive, you think I'm smart, you think my jokes are funny. Now all of a sudden, you want to go to lunch. Listen. Ever had people in your life, they ain't, never, they ain't never had time to go to lunch with you. But now you get elevated. Now you start building something. And now they want to respond to your DM. Come on here. Now they want to, no, 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 no. No, I need you to go back. I need you to go back before I got elevated and respond to me the same way you responded to me when I was not in this place. Because you don't like me, you like my elevation. 
You like what you think you can get out of me. Come on. You wouldn't even stud me when I was taking out the trash. You wouldn't even stud me when I didn't have all these keys. You better be mindful of those jokers that show up. I'm going to be good today. You better be mindful of those jokers that show up in your life that want to now be connected to you. Thank you, pretty. I was pretty when I was nappy headed. Hello, somebody. I was pretty when I couldn't afford a quick weave. I was pretty. Come on here. But some of y'all, y'all think you're pretty now. You were pretty then when you didn't have. Come on. I'm gonna calm down, but I just I don't I don't got mad that you that you looking at me now. You know the song said back then you didn't want me, but now I'm hot and you y'all better act like you're from the hood. Don't play with me in here. You trying to act like you want me now? You don't want me. You want my elevation. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't want you when you were wheeling around the trash can. But now, you're sitting in the room in the high rise, got keys to the building. And now all of a sudden you want to take me to lunch. No, I can take myself to lunch now. I can buy my own drink. Come on here. Come on, some of y'all are so thirsty. Come on. Come, come. Let me, let me. Keep going. Let me keep going. Gotta get out of here. They, they didn't want you. And I know some people in here. There were some females that didn't want me when I was making eighteen thousand seven hundred dollars. And my wife was like, let me go ahead and take that on. Let me go ahead and take that on. And glad that she took that on. But see, but see, then because when I'm making that $18,700, oh, he had to be making this before he made. But let me tell you what God did. God kept shifting my life, shifting my life, shifting my life, shifting my life, my life, my life, my life, my life, my life. Come on. God kept shifting my life and making me more than I thought that I would ever be. Y'all gonna make me preach real good this Sunday. I need somebody to understand that you got grace on you. I dare you to look down your row and say, I got grace on me. Try not to shout right here. Every attack on your life is a reverse agreement. Every attack on your life is a reverse agreement, which means the agreement that was I was supposed to be in my next, every time you attack me, you make the agreement, the agreement that that's what God is going to do in my life. Write it down. Write it down. Every attack on your life is a reversed agreement. Every attack on your life is an averse agreement. Almost done. He's now attractive because he's been elevated. And I need all of y'all to be, be mindful. They didn't think you were attractive then. But they think that you are attractive now. You didn't like me then. And I love it. I love seeing people in the evolution. They post pictures of what they look like when they were growing up, and and then now all of a sudden they they in the gym, and you know, and now they they look amazing and all of that, and all of those individuals that didn't give them the time of day are now liking their stuff, and oh, I didn't know you were gonna turn out to be that. Well, you didn't have vision. Oh, you didn't have. Come on, you were not a purpose seer. But I don't like people that you can't tell what I'm going to be. Just because you look the way you look today don't mean you're going to look like that tomorrow. See, 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 YouTube is stuck on where I am and God is working on what I'm about to be. Now, the Bible says she finds him attractive. You know the story. You know the story. She finds him attractive. And here he goes getting his coat stole again. But because favor is on him, but because favor is connected to him, even in jail he finds favor with the cupbearer and the cake maker. 
and he finds favor with the, with, the, with the guards and he finds favor there. And the word says that he goes from dreaming dreams to interpreting dreams. And so now there's a shift that has taken place in his life because when God gives you a dream, there is a process, there is deliverance, and then there is manifestation. So you got to understand that what happens for us, we go from dreaming to being able to actually interpret how we're going to make the dream happen. Because it's one thing to have a dream. But it's something else to be able to interpret the dream and to be able to come up with the outliers of how this dream is going to be what it's going to be. And some of us, we have a dream, but we don't have a plan. And God wants to give you a plan, but the only way he can give you a plan is that he gets to lock you up with a whole bunch of other people with plans that have not moved yet. And you have to tell them how to come out of their plan before you can come out of yours. Let me, let me break this down. One of the things that I don't like about pastoring is that God will let you get other folks delivered and let you stand in the wilderness. Let you stand. You, and, 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 I don't know if we got some people in here. You good at giving everybody else advice, but then when it comes to your house, it looks like everything don't work. You pray for other people and God just, boom, he give it to them. And then you pray for yourself and you be like, Hey, bro, where you at? It like he ain't even speaking, like he ain't even said nothing, like he ain't even spoke. But, 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 but God puts Joseph in jail with the cup baker, and he puts him in jail with the cup bearer and the cup and the, and the, and the cake maker. And the Bible says that he's telling their dreams. He literally says to them, and we're closing, he literally says to one of them, he said, one of y'all going to live, they're playing goldfish. And he said, one of y'all going to live and one of y'all going to die. One of y'all going to live, and one of y'all going to die. But he says, when you get out of here, please remember me. Please don't forget me. Now, funny, the one that died, he forgot it. But the one that says, look, I still got to go bake cakes for the king. The king says, I can get a cup bearer anywhere. But this dude that made these cakes, I think I better hold on to him. The word says that there was a party going on and old buddy was making cakes for the party. And the word says, and we closing, and the word says that the king has a dream that his prophets cannot interpret. Hear me, hear me, that his prophets cannot interpret. And the word says that the man, while he's, while he's listening, he's ear hustling, he says to the king, he says, I know a dude in jail by the name of Joseph that can tell you about your dream. The reason why some of y'all ain't going to never get out of your pit is because you stopped working in the pit. You stop preaching and you stop doing what you're doing in your low place. In your low place is how you need to respond the way you need to respond. So he says to him, he says, I tell you that he will be able to interpret your dream. This is grace. Hear me. This is grace because he is a felon and he's locked up in jail. The Bible says they summon him. He comes to the king and he says to the king, there will be seven years of plenty. And then there will be seven years of famine. In those seven years of plenty, I need for you to store up in those seven years of plenty because those seven years of famine are coming. So let me tell you what happens. So the king says, all right, if your dream is your dream in the seven years of plenty, I need you to go back to jail until the seven years of none plenty comes. Word says for seven more years he goes back to jail. He goes back to jail because now we want to make sure that what you're saying, ain't you ain't just saying something just to get out of jail. I want to make sure that you ain't just saying this just to get out. And I want you to write this down, and this is our last point. What looks like a struggle is actually a shift. What looks like a struggle is actually a shift. 
So year one goes by, he is consistent and he's right where he needs to be. Year two goes by and we done, he is right where he needs to be. Year three, year four, year five, year six, and year seven. The Bible says in year seven, the king summons him again and he says, look, he said, it appears that the crops didn't grow the year prior to that the way that they were going to grow because we're talking about sudden increase. He says, so now what I need you to do, since you were able to predict and you were able to say that for seven years we were going to be plenteous and it appears that we're now going into a famine I need to put you over all of this stuff because clearly you know what you're talking about grace now comes back pulls him out of jail with a felony record of assault and sexual assault and battery and God pulls him out of jail. I think I might preach, but I ain't going to try to preach. Pulls him out of jail. And the Bible says when God pulls him out of jail, he gives him the highest job in the city. And guess who comes trickling in the city? Because they don't have nothing to eat. The people that sold you out. But did you sell me out or did you push me into my destiny? Let me calm down. Did you sell me out or did you push me to the place where God has called me? I struggled, but what was a struggle was really a shift. I need six people in this room that's been struggling the last three months to understand that God is about to shift you into a place that you've never been before. I need you to tap yourself on the chest. Come on, tap yourself on the chest and let the devil know that grace is on you. And because grace is on you you're not gonna die what everybody else died from because grace is on you you are about to live like you never lived before why because grace is somebody open your mouth and say grace is on me grace is on me grace is on me I may not have a lot of money but I got grace I may not have a lot of friends but I got oh there it go there it go I got grace on me and when you got grace on you, you can go in a room with no friends and no money and command what you want because you got grace on you. I need somebody to lift their hands and say, thank God for grace. It was grace and mercy that brought me through. It was grace and mercy that brought me over. It was grace and mercy. How did he get here with no degrees? I got grace. How did he get here and his resume does not reflect what he's supposed to be? I got grace. How did he get here and his mom and daddy didn't have money? I got grace. High five your neighbor and say, neighbor, do, 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 do. neighbor, say, I got grace. And because I got grace, I'm about to walk out of a situation that other people died from. Y'all don't want to preach with me. Y'all don't want to shout with me. But if it had not been for the Lord ooh, who was on my side, tell me. I got out of the car accident because of grace. You live through cancer because of, come on, you live through the bad relationship because of, you didn't get alcohol poison because of, and what other people died from. You now standing in here living and smiling because you got grace. You ain't that special. You got grace on you. You ain't that cute. You got grace on you. And because you got grace on you. Let me tell you what grace will do. Grace will look at you even in your deathly state and will literally say, nope. Just because it's dead don't mean it's time to bury Word, and we close the word says Jesus it showed up in the city and a woman 
is getting ready to bury her son. The Bible says they are in the middle of a funeral procession. And the Bible says that Jesus walks up. He don't tell them to open the casket. They on their way to bury the boy. And Jesus lays hands on the casket. And the Bible says that the boy sits up in the casket because what Jesus does he says my grace is sufficient which means you can't I need somebody in here that says I thought I was going to die but because of his sufficient grace because of his sufficient mercy I'm still as we as we close Joseph becomes the savior to the people who knew what his dream was going to be. He becomes the savior to the individuals and the folks that said that you're not going to make it, you're not going to live, but now this is the moment, this is the time. Well, look, what God says, look, he said, yeah, he says, look, the Bible says that he blesses them. And the fun part about the scripture is that we're done. They can't even recognize him but they still look the same ah. ain't nothing about you change you still look the same walk the same talk the same and let me tell you about people people like oh you acting different I am Let me, I got to walk a little bit. Come on here. Oh, you, you don't come around that much. That's right. Because, because where I'm going, come on here. It requires me. Come on to shut my mouth. It requires me to be alone. It requires me to not be around you. And let me tell you what God is doing. God is separating you because he's about to. He's about to elevate you. So if you got separation going on, you on your way up high. He's separating you because he's about to take you to another place. If they say you acting different, just keep acting different because God is elevating you to another place. I need some people in here. There are people talking about you, saying that you're acting different to lift your hands and say, God, I'm ready for the elevation. She don't talk the same. He don't walk the same. He don't come around no more. He ain't here no more. I can't be here because of where God is taking me. I can't be here because of where God is elevating. We're gonna do a little exercise and then we're gonna go home. I want you to sit down on your seat real quick. Come on, sit down. 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 As you're sitting down, you're getting ready to leap up, but when you leap up, you're leaping into your next and you're leaping into your destiny. And you're leaping out of some circles into some new circles. So if you ain't ready to leap, come on here. And if you ain't ready to let go of them people, if you ain't ready to let go a lot and all those individuals, if you ain't ready to let go of them, come on here, that may not be the circle that you need to be in. But I need some people in this room. Come on, three, come on. We gonna jump up at one. Come on, you ought to just lift your hands because eyes have not seen. Come on, God just wanted the spotlight to be on you. Ears have not heard because some of y'all about to come out of darkness into the marvelous light. Come on, lift your hands. Come on, too. After you have suffered a while. Come on, this your jump up. Come on, this your jump up. Come on, one jump. Come on, jump into you. I ain't what I used to be. I ain't where I was. Oh, I felt the Holy Ghost. Come on, I'm leaping into my next. I'm leaping into my breakthrough. Y'all got me. I'm leaping over pain. 
I'm leaping over sickness. I'm leaping over troubles. I'm leaping over my problems. I'm leaping over my circumstance. I'm leaping over what stood in my way. I'm leaping over what God has for me. All my leapers in here, you ought to just take another leap and say, I'm leaping into my destiny. I'm leaping into my breakthrough. I'm leaping into my next. says in Amos 9 that that thing is about to happen so fast and my favorite part is that it's about to make your head spin come on I got some head spinning miracles that's been knocking on my door and I'm looking for God to do it right y'all not trying to have church with me I need you to give God an Amos 9 praise that God's going to do it right 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 I need you to take your right hand we done now come on take your right hand and tap yourself on the chest tap yourself on the chest and say, I got grace on me. I got grace on me. I got grace on me. And the grace that is on me is about to take me to a place that I've never been before. The grace that is on me is about to do what has never been done before. The grace that is on me is about to catapult me into a new season. The grace that is on me is about to change my life and change generational curses. I am graced, graced for this. When grace is on you, you might have to have a few bumps to get there, but because it's on you, See, the enemy knows that you have what it takes to save your family. That's why y'all can't get along. That's why y'all can't work together. That's why the enemy got y'all acting crazy because he knows that you carry the key to save your house. And so if I can stop the person that has the key, then I can block every door that you're getting ready to walk into. I share this in Bible study. I, 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 I like to read and one of my favorite authors is Sine Beth. And she said something, if you jump, you'll jump right in the will of God. And the fear of jumping was, it's a fearful thing because I don't know where I'm going. I don't know what I'm doing. Let me tell you what really upsets me with God is that you tell me to write the vision. Make it plain. And then come and change all my stuff. I ain't talking about y'all. I ain't talking about y'all because I know, I know that what y'all wrote, it came to pass. But God will come in. And change every single thing that I've been praying for. And what I've been asking God for. And he'll just, and he does it in a way to where he almost made me think I'm going to lose it. He does it in a way where he makes me think like, man, I ain't got no other option. Yeah. 
Let me have sleepless nights. Let me call on him. He don't answer. I ain't talking about y'all instant quick people. Sometimes I'll be like, all right, God, where you at, man? Where you at? Where you at? I'm about to fold. My mind ain't, my mind's slipping. And I don't, I don't know what you want me to do with this. I don't know where you want me to go with this. And, 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 and you keep telling me to do it, and then it keeps falling apart. You keep telling me to show up. I ain't talking to nobody in here. Let me talk to myself. You keep telling me to be faithful and consistent, but the money ain't there. Come on, I don't know how I'm going to pay for this, but you told me to do it. I don't know how I'm going to make this happen, but you told me to step into this place. Lord, why did you tell me to do something that I cannot afford? Why did you tell me to do something that I don't feel like that I can't handle? I ain't talking about you. I'm talking about myself. There are moments where I'm like, God, why am I in this place and why did you put me here? God looks at me he says talk without faith it is impossible to please me Joseph had no idea what he would become but his dream did and because his dream knew what he would become and because his brothers knew what he would become. They felt that they were doing him a, 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 a plan of justice by selling him out. Not knowing that you really just put me in a place where God was about to manifest my dream. When God spoke to me and we're done today, when God spoke to me, and he says every struggle is a shift. Every struggle is a shift. Before we had automatics, we had stick shifts. I learned how to drive in my grandmama Yugo with a seatbelt. We went around a little thing. But the thing about the stick shift is that if you didn't tap the clutch at the right time, the car would stall out. If you didn't change gears at the right time, the car would stall out. You see, now what I don't like in the current church is we've turned into an automatic church. Hassan, sing me into glory. Y'all know automatic. But if you ever come in on stick shift, your gear is not his gear. Let me, let me, your, your, your moment of moving is not his moment. And, 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 and if you were in a stick shift when you got on the hill, if you didn't put your foot on the brake, you were going to roll down the hill. Now they have what they call automatic brakes. So now, even when you're on the hill, it stops for you. And now in the church, we've done too much stopping for you. We've done too many automated things. Wave your hand. Tell God thank you. Do this, do that. And so now you come in with the expectation is that I'm going to automate you. You just come in, and some of y'all came, y'all, and some of y'all really y'all in neutral. Y'all just, you know, I'm just, I'm just here. In the fast lane, in neutral, but it's okay. Which means I don't, I don't care if I get it, I don't care if I don't. But God is trying to get some of you to shift out of first gear into another gear but in order to go to another gear it requires you to accelerate and acceleration requires pressure 
Your car isn't going anywhere unless you press the gas. For the person that is in here, pressure's on you right now because God is about to accelerate you. While I was pinning this sermon, I kept thinking about pressure. The more pressure you put on the gas, the more acceleration you get. Some of y'all are complaining about the pressure. Not knowing that your speed at which where you were going to get where you got is about to get you there quicker. Because God accelerated you. My call to the altar this morning not to anybody that has a title it's not to anybody that says I, I want to be seen my, my call is to the individual that pressure is on you right now and you keep decelerating which means you keep slowing down because of the pressure when the pressure really should be speeding you up. And it seems like right now you got so much pressure on you, you don't even know how to think straight. You showing up. But the pressure is on you. If that's you, if you got pressure, come on, won't you come to this altar? Won't you come to this altar? Your loving kindness towards me, your tender mercies I see day after day. Great is your mercy. Great is your But what I am afraid is that my dream is not going to come to pass. If that's you, the altar is open to you. You said, I got the dream, but I don't think it's going to happen. I, I just, I just, I've had so many disappointments. I've had so many, so many hiccups. And I just don't see it. It's all right. I just don't see it. I, I don't see no way of God doing what he say he gonna do in my life. Come on, if that's you. Come on, if that's you. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. 
I see it, but I don't believe it. Some of y'all don't want people to know that you don't really believe what you've been doing. And the only thing that have kept you doing it was because you're trying to keep up a show for them. I just, I just don't know if this thing gonna really happen. If this thing gonna really take place. Is this gonna really manifest in my life? And this is the thing. Some of you are stuck between disappointment and manifestation. Which means I jumped out, got disappointed, and now I can't jump out no more because I can't, I can't accept, I can't take another, I can't take another disappointment. I can't take another ball drop. I got two more calls and we're done. Last call before I do my salvation call. If you're in this room, if you're in this room and you stop dreaming, I want you to come. If you stop dreaming, I want you to come. You, 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 you stop dreaming. You stop dreaming. I want you to come. You say, listen, I just, I just, I don't even dream anymore. I don't even, I don't even have dreams no more. I don't even believe no more. If you're, if that's you, won't you come? My last call is that if you're not saved and you don't know who Jesus is, I want you to make your way to this altar. If you're not saved, if you don't know who Jesus is, I want you to make your way to the altar because Jesus is waiting on you. And if you have been in relationships with Jesus and you say, I'm not close as I used to be to him, but I want to reconnect again, I want to open the altar to you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. For everyone of you that's standing here, I want you to take your right hand, put it on your chest. And I want you to say this with me, grace is on me. Come on, say that again, grace is on me. Now listen, before we do the next thing, you're standing here because you believe and you know what God can do in your life. And today, because you are standing at this altar, we are declaring that God is about to make some shifts in your life. And that you even stepping up here is a leap. It is a shift that God says that he wants to do and make happen for you. And you're not just standing here to be standing here. You are in the perfect will of God which means you are standing in his will and you are standing in his moment. So for those of you that are standing here with your hands on your chest, I want you to understand that grace is on you. You've already lived through some stuff. You've already made it through some stuff that you probably should have died through, that you probably should have been over by now. But because of the grace of God, you are still standing here. And listen, all of you here that have dreams and goals and all this pressure is on you, God is about to give you inside pressure. God is about to give you inside power for all of the outside pressure that is on you. And God is about to release that pressure off of you. And so what I want you to do as you're standing here at that altar, I want you to get a thought in your mind about where you want God to take you and what you want God to do in your life. And we're just going to simply come and we're just going to touch you uh, because we believe in the power of God and in the grace of God me touching you is just me saying that God is confirming what he's going to do in your life and that he's going to manifest what he's going to do in your life and that this is not the end and that it's not over for you and I want you to make sure that you have your mind on Jesus and I want you to understand that God has graced you for this season and graced you for this time and I'm just literally just going to come down the road uh, because what God has for you is simply for you and God has purpose and plans and that this is not the end and that this is not over. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. God has you for this moment and for this time and for this season. Come on, and I declare that every ounce of pressure that is on your life, that it is being released off of you. Come on, that it is being released off of you. That it is being released off of you, that it is being released 
off of you, that it is being released off of you, that it is being released off of you, that the pressures of life come on, that what seems like a struggle is really a shift, that what seems like a struggle is really a shift for me, it's really transformation for me, it's really better for me, it's really more for me. I'm trusting you, God, that you can do what you say that you are going to do. And God, I know that you are God. I am still 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 God. And I'm still going to do what I said that I'm going to do. I'm still going to make happen what I said that I'm going to make happen. I'm still going to make transpire what I said that I'm going to do in your life. Come on, I'm still God. 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 I'm still the same God. Come on, all this pressure, all this pressure, come on, all this pressure, all the pressure, come on, all the pressure, come on, has to be released. Come on, all the pressure has to be released. Come on, we're almost there. All the pressure has to be released. Come on, all this pressure has to be released. Come on, I know what I've been called to do. I am graced to do this. I am graced to do this. I have purpose on my life. I carry keys to make the change. I carry the keys to make the change. I carry the keys to make the change. I have purpose on me. I have purpose on me. I have grace on me. Come on here. The struggle is a shift. Come on. The struggle is a shift. 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 I know what I'm doing. I am God. I have not left you. I have not forgotten you. This struggle is a shift for you. This struggle is a way making move for you. Is God doing what he said that he's going to do in your life? You will not fall out. You will not quit. The pressure does not have you. 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 I'm shifting 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 you. I speak over your life that the struggle is just a shift. The struggle is just a shift. And what was a fight? What we a fight? Because it's just a shift. It's just a shift. I'm under pressure. I'm under pressure. I speak strength over you. 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 That all this pressure, 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 that the pressure in your mind, that the pressure in your mind, that the pressure in your mind, that the pressure in your life, that you will accomplish what you set out to do. Come on, all of this pressure. Come on, all of this pressure. All of this pressure. All of the pressure. Come on, be released. Come on, be healed. Come on, be healed. Come on, pressure. 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 Come on, God has you. 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 I speak strength that you will dream again. That you will dream again. I speak that all the pressure, that all the pressure, that God is going to give you power to manage that God is going to give you power to manifest what he's decided to manifest in your life to do what he's going to do in your life to strengthen you to strengthen your heart to strengthen your mind come on strengthen your heart come on strengthen your mind come on strengthen your heart come on strengthen your mind come on strengthen your heart come on strengthen your mind come on all this pressure come on every ounce of pressure that every struggle is a shift 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 I don't know what's next for me but I trust you I don't know what's next for me but I trust for you every struggle every struggle every struggle every struggle every struggle every struggle is a shift it's a shift it's a shift come on come on
thank you that you are giving him power to manage the pressure. I speak strength. I speak strength and I speak that every struggle is this altar quick every man 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 man. thank you Jesus thank you Jesus I was praying and talking to the Lord and I was just recently on spring break with my sons and the Lord was talking to me about polluted inheritance, how that we could carry the inheritance but when it's polluted It won't do anything, it won't go anywhere, and a lot of times we don't understand as men that the inheritance lies within us. But one morning I woke up and I was sitting out by the water and God tends to speak to me by the water and I was, I was, I was, I was attempting to cry but I couldn't cry. And I thought, well maybe, maybe, maybe I just don't need to cry. Maybe I just don't need to uh, feel this moment of expression that jumped on me uh, in this moment. And then I started dissecting why I could not cry in that moment. And the reason why I could not cry in that moment is because every time I would avail myself to cry or be vulnerable around the right people or the wrong people, I would have to shut that down. Because strong is what I had to always exemplify in every moment. And so in that moment, I'm thinking like, God, I need to be able to release this pressure as a man. The pressure of taking care, the pressure of showing up, the pressure of being where I need to be, doing what I'm supposed to be doing, the pressure of being strong when I'm not. And the pressure of having to show up even when I don't want to show up. And so the Lord has spoke to me this morning. He said, I want you to pray for every man that is in that room. And I want you to cover them. And I want you to cover them in prayer. And I want you to help them understand that the current pressure that they are under, that God is releasing that off of them. And that you are going to do what God has called you to do. And you're going to set out and do what has never been done before in your life. And the reason why I'm saying this to every man in this room, I'm saying this to you is because the devil wants to attack you first. The promise first came to the man. Let me take you to Genesis. And the Bible then manipulates man and now we lose our promise. 
But guess what God says? God says that the promise is still the promise. And what I promised to man, man is still going to have. But what I've been noticing over the last seven months and over the last year and a half is that men have been under attack. They have been under attack, and so now suicide in men is up at an alarming rate. Y'all don't know this, but it's the truth. Now men are committing suicide, and especially African-American men are now committing suicide at an alarming rate. And I cannot let you in good favor and in good health come in this room without covering your mind, without covering your silent depression, without covering your silent pressure, without covering where you are next to remind you that God has not forgotten about you and that God has you, and that I need you to be stronger than you ever been in this season. So for all of you that are out in the pew, if you'll stretch your hand towards these men. Heavenly Father, every man that is standing here, I pray, God, that you cover them. God, not just openly, but cover them privately. And God, not only do you cover them privately, but God, I ask that you touch these men that may be struggling, that may be going through, that may be trying to figure out, God, what am I going to do with my life? That might be trying to figure out, God, what do I do with my family? How do I make this happen? How do I make this take place? I pray for strength. And not only do I pray for strength, I ask God that you touch the hidden anxiety that they don't show to their spouse. That you touch the hidden anxiety, God, that they don't show to their children. That you touch the hidden anxiety, God, that they don't show to their family. And that you breathe strength into them as they're standing at this altar. Lord, the days that they sit in their car and cry, I ask God that you give them the strength that they need. Lord, the days that they don't feel like going to work and they really want to quit. I speak, God, that you give them the strength that they need. Y'all not praying in the pew. Come on, God, that the, the silent depression, the silent moments in their life, I pray that you give them the power and the strength to push like they've never pushed before. The smile that ain't real. I pray that you give them strength to make it real. The happiness that they exemplify, I pray that you give them real happiness. The strength that they pretend to have, I pray that you give them the real strength. And God, we bind anxiety, we bind depression, we bind oppression, and we speak strength on these men. Strength on their minds, strength on their temptation, strength on the things that are coming against them, strength on their silent addictions. God, that you will cover them and give them the strength that they need. And God, as we close this prayer, well, I ask that you touch them that they are entrepreneurs that they are, in, 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 they are intuitive about what you've called them to do and we bind the hand of the enemy on their life I bind the hand of temptation I bind the attacks of the enemy and we declare that these are strong men that these are great men that these are mighty men that these are men that will change culture and a generation that these are men that will know who they are not just in the natural Natural, but in the spirit that you will increase their spiritual walk as well as their natural walk yeah. and God today I thank you for every man that is at this altar I thank you God for giving them power over their private battles I thank you God for giving them power over their private temptations I thank you God for giving them victory over the things that they cannot talk about I thank you, God, for you giving them what they need to continue to keep being the father that you've called them to be, to continue to be the husband that you've called them to be, to continue to be the provider that you've called them to be, to continue to grow to be the man that you've called them to be. And Satan, as you have made an attempt to attack us, we now counter in that attack with prayer. That these men are covered under your blood. And that every ounce of discouragement and that every ounce of lack has to leave them today. Because these men are great men. These men are powerful men. These men are men of value and integrity. And God, we declare that they will be strong and they will be boisterous and they will be what you've called them to be. And we honor you in Jesus' name. We pray. Amen.
Amen. Every man, as you're leaving this altar, come on, dap somebody up and let them know we got this. Come on, let them know. Let them know you got it. Come on, you got this. Come on, y'all know, y'all know sometimes the men got to be reminded. Come on, come on, we have to be reminded. Come on, all of us ain't in the street. Come on, some of us taking care of our kids. Come on. Hallelujah. You got this. Can we celebrate God one more time for these men? Everybody's standing all over the room. Everybody's standing all over the room. Listen, if you came in late as we're dismissing, if you came in late and you did not get an opportunity to get into the moment of worship of sowing, uh, we want to give you an opportunity to do that. Uh, so they'll leave the information on the screen for you. Uh, if you came in late and did not get in the opportunity to sow uh, in that moment of worship, this information is on the screen. Uh, and again, there are several ways to give and sow here in the church. Listen, did we not enjoy the word of the Lord today? God is shifting you and every struggle in your life is about to be a shift. Every struggle, God is about to shift you. Whether you see it, don't see it, feel it or don't feel it, God is about to shift you. Hands lifted, Heavenly Father, we thank you. We thank you for the shift. I thank you, God, that you continue to send resources to this house so that we can be the light and the beacon that you've called us to be. I thank you, God, that we will lack for nothing. I thank you, God, that every person in this room will have no spirit of lack on them and that they will understand that poverty is a spirit. We bind the spirit of poverty. We bind the spirit of reverse. And we speak that, God, that we are going forward. That we are moving forward in your will and in your purpose. And, God, as we leave this place, give us the power to shift into the direction that you've called us to shift into. And, Lord, we thank you for your goodness and your mercy. And we thank you, God, that we are graced for this. Why don't you put your hand on your chest one more time and say, I'm graced for this. Come on, say it to yourself again. I'm graced for this. God bless you. You are dismissed. Pastor Tuck, I want to take a moment and thank all of our virtual viewers for taking out the time to join us in service today. Listen, the word today was absolutely life-changing and I pray that it was life-changing for you. I pray that the word that you heard today has pushed you into your next, has challenged you to want to do more. I want to thank you for watching and for viewing and for tapping in with us on this afternoon. Listen, as you know, Living Faith is always doing stuff in the community and if you ever want to sow or if you ever want to jump in and be a part of this great ministry, you can join us by going to our website at lftchurch.com or you can join us on any social media handles at Living Faith Tabernacle. Listen, I want to thank you for coming and joining us and being in service today. I'll see you on next Sunday at 10 a.m. Why? Because we are the church that makes you fall in love with church all over again. I'll see you next week.